The following satellite transmission, copyright 1986 by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. I remember one time back in the 1970s, I saw a young American Marine being interviewed by a network television newsman after a battle in Vietnam. And he said, I think we've got enough to do in this world just helping each other without shooting at each other. Simple but eloquent words from a soldier out in the field, from a man daily encountering the misery and the anguish of warfare. And yet, how can humanity ever expect to be able to get along across international borders when so many have so much trouble just getting along across a backyard picket fence? How can we hope for a better world until we as human beings learn to become better human beings, better men and women, to live as brothers and sisters in the great global family of God? Benjamin Franklin once declared, there never was a good war or a bad peace. Yet violent conflict has plagued humanity for centuries. It was said of the ancient Romans that they would by violence turn a city into a desert and call that peacemaking. And yet in truth, it is only by love, only by spiritual peace that the greatest human good may be assured. Some will argue that one must seek victory for one's cause, even through the technique of violence. But through violence, only one side may achieve victory. Through peace, both sides of a conflict may become victors, yet only the spiritual power of love can ultimately bring that sort of true peace on earth and true goodwill among humankind. The one-time world champion boxer Muhammad Ali once said, Violence is like an angry bull charging at a locomotive. It is a foolish way to attempt to resolve problems. It is, in fact, no solution. But humanity can only become thus spiritually transformed to be able to live in peace by the power of of the love of God, the realization God loves you. God cares about you as if you were the only person in this entire universe. You are, dare to believe it in this moment, you are a son or daughter of the living God who is the architect of time and space, who is the first great source and center of all things and beings. Moment by moment, day by day, year by year, by the very will and the wisdom of God, if only you will seek for it. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. For this world is but one great city. And the curvature of this earth, the only city limit for all humanity are brothers and sisters in this worldwide family of God. You could drive across the country the United States of America, for example, and would see deserts, plains, and farmlands. And if you drove through my home state of Kansas, you would see miles and miles of more miles and miles. Daily and yearly, the population of this planet is proliferating. Humanity cannot hope, however, to live in outward peace until humanity finds an inward peace, the peace of knowing the living love of God, the universal Father of us all, the friend of all, and seeking above all, the will of God, daring to pray that great prayer, the greatest perhaps of all prayers. Your will be done. It is my will, great God, that your will be done in my life. That will change everything. The Chinese have an ancient saying that a strong nation depends upon strong states, strong states upon strong provinces, that strong provinces depend on strong villages and villages upon families, and the family upon each individual member. Because the family is the most basic institution of all institutions. And this universe itself is one great intergalactic family, and you are a member in it. A son or daughter of God and a member in God's great family of love. The challenge is to live this out day by day. Yet consider, it's an interesting fact that in the English language we speak of making friends or making enemies. 
That's the verb we use, making a friend or an enemy. And is that not the way it is? That friendships and loving relationships don't just happen coincidentally or accidentally. They are made, they are created, they are worked for, they are maintained consciously and willfully for both love and hatred are choices. And which one of these you choose is crucial both for your life and for the very world itself. And what kind of world this is going to be depending upon your attitude, your decision, what you want to do and be and become. And if you turn your will and your life over to God, the God who loves you, who has tremendous plans and a wonderful future for you, all things will then become as new. I'll never forget one afternoon in San Francisco. I was walking along the street. I saw a man give a street beggar a quarter. And the man said, I'm doing this because it makes me happy to do it. And you might wonder, then why didn't he give him a dollar and really have the time of his life? And yet the truth remains that for some strange and curious reason, it's true that we human beings really do derive genuine enjoyment from the act of helping our fellow human beings, doing good to somebody else. Why might that be? Might it not be perhaps that we were born to live that way? We were created to live that way as brothers and sisters in the great worldwide family of God. It feels right because it is right to love our neighbors as ourselves. But a world at peace requires a generation of peaceful people and the ideal of living human life is the attainment of mental balance, physical well-being, emotional equipoise, and spiritual stability. And such development must thus be symmetrical. Professors of Asian studies report that in modern China, oftentimes there will be too much rice or millet grown in one province, with severe famine and starvation existing in a neighboring province. Such unbalanced distribution is a problem for many a nation. But analogically, unbalanced development is the problem likewise of many a human being, perhaps of you. Intellectual growth, for instance, at the expense of spiritual progress is distorting, as would be physical development without corresponding mental self-realization. The aim, then, is physical, mental, and spiritual symmetry. But for many human beings, it's so difficult to imagine that God really cares about them. Personally, individually, it would be easier to imagine that God would be interested, for example, in the history of the world than in their own personal life histories. If you went into some great library with dust cascading around you and you were pulling book after book off the shelves, and you began reading all about ancient Athens, Greece under Pericles, Rome under the Caesars, the French Revolution, the Italian Renaissance, such events as these, you might think to yourself, yes, God would certainly be interested in these mighty crises and turning points in the world. But remember, too, that God is also interested in the mighty crises and the turning points of your ordinary day-by-day -day life the affairs of your existence. Jesus of Nazareth declared the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Jesus was thus in the most extreme way possible describing how intimately God knows about you and God knows you. God knows every hair on your head, every freckle on the back of your neck. God knows everything about you, your thoughts, your secret feelings, your desires, your frustrations, your disappointments, and God loves you. God loves you tremendously. And it is the love of God transforming individual lives, such as your individual life, which will ultimately result in peace on earth and goodwill among human beings. Because you can't make a good omelet out of bad eggs. And you can't make a good, great, wonderful, peaceful world of harmony and goodwill with human beings, individual men and women, filled with hatred and greed and anger and hostility. Therefore, if you become the kind of person you want this world to become populated with, then you have directly made input into the future of this planet. The author, Victor Hugo, 
described one major aspect of God most aptly when he wrote, the all would not be the all unless it contained personality, and that personality is God. End of quote. Harvard professor William James said, when we believe in God, the universe is then no longer a mere it. It becomes a thou. And Jesus of Nazareth declared, God is a father, that you are infinitely loved by God. God is your father and your friend. 152 times in those four Gospels, the stories of Jesus' life, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 152 times, Jesus refers to God by the word father. Not merely his father, not just saying my father, but your father again and again to crowds, to great multitudes who had gathered, who had assembled to hear him discourse on these tremendous truths. Your father, your father, your father. In that fashion did Jesus refer to God and to find God as your father personally and to know God and to have a vital sense of daily companionship with God, to live your life in the zest and joy of living as the son or daughter of God you were born to be, created to be, and you really in your heart of hearts long and yearn to be. That is the supreme delight of all of mortal life. May you find God now. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics, if you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Ver and Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.